there. Welcome. This is the Kelly's Astrology Podcast, where you can find insight, guidance, and understanding through astrology. I'm Kelly, and I'll be your host. Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Kelly's Astrology Podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to take a look at some astrology highlights for the second half of August. So we'll be looking at the timeframe from August 17 through to August 30th. In that two-week period, there is going to be a dramatic full moon in Aquarius. The full moon will be on August 19 or 20th, depending on whereabouts you are. The following week, the last week of August, there are two planetary moves that I've got my eye on. The reason for that is those two planets making those moves are going to help improve communication and also improve and boost relationships. We're looking at August 28th when Mercury will station direct and end its retrograde. I've also got my eye on August 29th when Venus will move out of Virgo and into Libra. Before then, I have a message for you if you are stuck trying to move from astrology student to astrology practitioner. Would you like to start seeing clients, but you don't know where to begin? I can help. In my astrology group mentoring, I'll take you through all the do's and don'ts that have helped me establish my own successful astrology practice. In group mentoring, you'll get guidance and support on how to set up your astrology practice and build your client base. I'll talk you through step-by-step how to price and promote your services. Along the way, we'll work together on refining your chart interpretation and predictive skills, and we'll also explore how to talk with clients. In group mentoring, you'll learn how to set yourself up for success in your own astrology business. If you're ready to take action to move forward in your journey with astrology, I hope to see you in group mentoring. Pop over to kellysastrology.com to sign up today. So now let's take a look at this full moon in Aquarius. So we are looking at Monday, August 19. It will be Tuesday, August 20th if you're in Australia. So the full moon is towards the end of the sign of Aquarius. The full moon will be at 27 degrees in Aquarius. And there's a few different points, a few different themes, a few different energies that are going to come in to this full moon in Aquarius. And that's what I want to take you through first. So the full moon is going to activate the mind and it's going to get you thinking. And that's because it's a full moon in an air sign. You might spend some time envisioning or imagining the future. We know Aquarius is a very forward-looking sign. You might also be contemplating how to better support a community or an organization that you care about. We know Aquarius is about collaborations and the collective. So we're really thinking about honoring our part of the collective and how we might want to participate that in new or in different ways. The most notable aspect for this full moon in Aquarius is a really tight square to Uranus in Taurus. So it's a full moon in Aquarius, but it is a full moon square Uranus in terms of the energy and what's going to be coming up for us all. The Uranus factor adds restlessness and it also adds a rebellious revolutionary quality. What that means is this full moon might arouse within you a really strong push for freedom or for change. You might feel restricted by things that have been in your life for a long time, and you may want to shake things up or change things around in fairly substantial or even dramatic ways. Because the full moon is square Uranus, it is definitely a time of some chaos and upheaval. We know that a full moon is already an activating and intense event. We know that when that happens each month, that our emotions are aroused, that we tend to be more uh, reactive. We're not in our most logical selves under a full moon. And then we add Uranus into the mix. And so we've got that heightened sense of the shock factor. And this can be about having to digest a shock that's happening around you. It might be that you have this kind of shocking realization for yourself, like that lightning bolt of awareness or insight that completely changes something that you want or something that you had been interested in. So your interest shifts, your priorities can change. That's the kind of like 
turning around upside down, you know, 180 kind of flip that a full moon square Uranus can bring. So it really is the kind of full moon where you want to expect the unexpected as wild developments will be possible. Some of those will be wild developments that you initiate that originate within you, and some of them will be happening around you and you will be responding to them. Underneath this energy of the full moon in Aquarius square Uranus is this desire for the space and the freedom to be more truly yourself, to be authentic, to let your kind of quirky individuality shine, to not hold back revealing who you are, to try to fit in or get external approval. So there's a lot of adjustments both internally and externally we can explore under this full moon square Uranus. When I think about this full moon plus Uranus factor, I'm actually really excited about the option to break with routine or to change an established tradition or pattern. So with this full moon square Uranus, we want to do things that are new or different. We're open to experimenting. We're not interested in the way things have been done. We're looking forward, not back, essentially. So it's going to be a great time to experiment and to try something new or different. It's the kind of energy where invention is definitely possible and inventions may happen quickly or out of necessity. So that's a lot about sort of the strong Uranus aspect on the full moon and a little bit about the fact that the full moon is in an air sign, which tends to be about looking forward. And it is often about movement and change anyway. I know Aquarius is a fixed sign, but the element of air is very mobile. So that idea of movement, dispersal, change, realignments, that's all part of this full moon in Aquarius square Uranus. Now, of course, I should say, if you have a lot of fixed sign placements in your birth chart, maybe you have a fixed sign on your ascendant or your sun, moon, or ascendant ruling planet are in a fixed sign. The four fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So if those signs are important in your chart, this full moon in Aquarius square to Uranus is going to be just that much more poignant and pivotal for you personally. So, Other themes about this full moon in Aquarius. So if we look at the ruler of the full moon, we're going to get some extra themes to keep in mind. So the full moon in Aquarius is ruled by Saturn. That's uh, how we look at it from a traditional astrology perspective. At the time of this full moon, Saturn is in Pisces. So we have the full moon in Aquarius and Saturn is in Pisces, the next sign around. So the position of Pisces to Aquarius, Pisces is second to Aquarius. If something's in Aquarius, that's like the first place. And the next sign around is like the second place, which evokes the topics of the second house. So general second house themes like money, cash flow, and income are all likely to come forward under this full moon as well. That mean that might mean that you are reviewing your budget. You might be going back over your savings plan. If you're focused on debt repayment, you're going to be tuning in to money matters. It might mean you get a bright idea about how to earn some extra cash, or you're having a discussion with your boss, your coworkers about pay, about salary, about raises, those kinds of things. So changes to money flow into and out of your life will be possible under this full moon in Aquarius ruled by Saturn in Pisces. We know that Saturn's orientation is long-term. So I'd be thinking about long-term money goals, long-term saving plans with Saturn in Pisces here. Uh, So that's something we can also add in as a possibility to give some energy and attention to through this full moon in Aquarius. So the full moon is in the latter part of Aquarius, the last third of Aquarius. And that means that it might be one of those full moons that inspires you to turn towards the unknown or to reconnect with your spirituality. You might get clear on what's not working. That's kind of to do with Saturn being the ruler of this full moon as well. And that's partly because the bright light of the full moon really does bring insights and revelations forward. Because we've got a lot of Saturn themes around this full moon, we get a reality check. We get to see what is and isn't going well, and then we can make adjustments or update our plans accordingly. So we get a really kind of clarifying quality of realization through this full moon in Aquarius. We may not be seeing what we want, but we see the truth of how things really are. 
Another important piece of this full moon in this latter part of Aquarius is that it might help you clarify who or what you owe a debt to. It might be that there's a financial debt that you need to just make sure you keep on your radar. There might be an emotional debt or an energetic obligation of some kind. And so getting clear on where there is some lingering kind of energy or focus between you and another person or you and an entity, you know, if there's a financial uh, debt you're keeping an eye on, we want to be aware of any energetic debt, emotional debt, actual financial debt, so that we can make sure we have it on our radar to resolve and to clear. What ultimately we're trying to do here is to remove weight that may be holding you back, But to do that, we have to get clear on what that weight is, where it came from, and what we're going to do about it. So there's a lot of different layers to this full moon in Aquarius, as there are to any full moon or new moon. But I'm hoping this is giving you a few different ways to think about the full moon and how you can work with it. Uh, There's a couple more things to share about the second half of August, but really as we're kind of summarizing this point on the full moon, that tight aspect from Uranus to the full moon really is going to bring some upheaval. And so if you want to reset your life, if you're in a stuck situation that you want to get moving or you want to turn around, this is going to be a great full moon under which to do exactly that. So things that have been stuck or going on for a long time, we can change them, we can break away from them, we can find freedom from things that have been really restrictive. So it's ultimately a full moon about liberation, and I would really encourage you to participate in that freeing process for yourself, to choose what it is you're going to create lightness around and where you're going to shift that baggage or that weight. So that's August 19th or 20th. That's our full moon in Aquarius. It is a very big full moon this month. So there's going to be a lot that rises to the surface that we're going to need some time to digest, think through, and make some changes around in the aftermath of. Now I want to turn our attention to the last week of August uh, because there are two planetary moves that I have got my eye on. Both of them would be considered from a technical point of view improvements for each planet in question. First up, we've got Mercury stationing direct. That's Wednesday, August 28th. It'll be the 29th if you're in Australia. And that means the end of Mercury retrograde. So that means that the final days of the month, the final days of August are a great chance to get back on track with delayed plans. You might finally sort out an unresolved matter, or you can get up to date on paperwork, emails, and other correspondence. Mercury is going to take a little bit of time to get back on track, but the improvements begin or the shift happens on the 28th or 29th of August. And each day after then, Mercury is moving a little faster, a little more clearer, and that's going to help with all kinds of Mercury things in our everyday lives. It means that as we head into September, Mercury is really getting back to a more regular pace and speed, and that's going to help with things like planning, decision-making, negotiation, any kind of business or financial discussion. It's just going to get easier and easier in the days following the end of Mercury retrograde. Uh, Those sort of the first week or two immediately after Mercury retrogrades, I basically think two weeks starting August 28th, that's a great cycle for second chances. So for things that you missed in the last couple of months, for things that you neglected in the last couple of months, this is a great time to go back and revisit those because you may get a do-over or a better outcome this time around. So Mercury stationing direct is definitely bringing a little bit more clarity, a little bit more of a logical energy forward. And that is always helpful given how heavy on communication and technology modern life is. And I guess in the case of saving the best for last, my favorite astro event in this last two weeks of August is Venus moving into Libra. Everything else that I've talked about is important, but this is the one thing that I think is going to be kind of really qualitatively helpful or indicate some improvements, which is why it's my favorite thing in the last two weeks of August. So Venus will move into Libra. It's August 29th in most locations. And then we're going to have Venus moving through Libra for almost four weeks from August 29th to September 22nd. Venus in Libra can bring sweet relief. This is a bit like cosmic honey. 
and it can help improve all kinds of relationship and interpersonal matters. What it means is that we have a planet in rulership and a benefic planet, one of our most helpful kinds of planets, no less. So a planet in rulership is always a good thing. A benefic planet in rulership is an even better thing. And what having a planet in rulership offers is some stability, can help you find firm ground, help you get back on track with things that are really sustainable, that are really nourishing, and that really are enhancing for you in some way. Now, Venus in Libra is not going to help everything in our lives get better. Venus in Libra is going to help the Venus things in our lives improve. So Venus in Libra is interested in peace and in finding agreements or making plans that really work for everyone involved. We know that Libra is a sign of compromise, and Venus here has really got that sort of tactful, diplomatic art of negotiation. We're not giving up on what we want, but we're really working to understand other people's needs and to try and find that middle meeting place that can be acceptable and workable for all. So Venus in Libra is going to be a time to think about what kinds of compromises am I open to, am I willing to engage in? Under that spirit of togetherness, Venus in Libra is going to help support unification, the idea of how can we bring people together, how can we bring ideas together, how can we pull groups together in support of the same kinds of ideas or interests. Venus is also the planet of relaxation, enjoyment, pleasure, and leisure. And so Venus in Libra might inspire you around relaxation as well. If you've forgotten how to relax and enjoy yourself, or if you don't know what you actually like, these next few weeks can help you maybe explore how you might define pleasure, enjoyment, and relaxation at this point in your life. The one thing that Venus in Libra is going to have to navigate is the South Node, and that's early in September. And so in that early September period where Venus comes near the South Node, you may want to think about a relationship habit, a tendency, or a fear that you would like to change. That is uh, Venus in Libra tapping into the longer trend of the South Node in Libra. And that means that Venus in Libra in 2024 has a little bit of a, a different quality to her as a transit. And it may be a time where you're able to lay to rest the ghosts of a past relationship. It might support you in clearing out old relationship baggage. So we're really trying to leave behind what isn't working in our relationships and interpersonal interactions. And we're thinking about how can I be more clear about what works for me or what my needs are, but in that collaborative kind of spirit, if you like. In general, anytime we have a benefic planet in one of its home signs, you're going to see some improvements in one or another area of life, maybe two areas of life. And that's really what we have to look forward to starting August 29, uh, once Venus comes home to Libra. Venus hasn't been in great condition for most of the month of August. And so I think you're really going to find that there's a little bit more of that smooth or ease quality coming back into friendships, family relationships, work dynamics, romantic partnerships once Venus comes into Libra. So that is your astro overview for the second half of August. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Feel free to let me know how you're experiencing all of these astro events, the full moon square Uranus, Mercury direct, and then Venus into Libra. Let me know in the comments below how this is showing up for you. I'll be back to share more in next week's show. Until then, take care. <music>